Hello, uh, I am Anthony Gresh. I'm an associate professor of anthropology here at Connecticut College. This is Tim Hartshorn, who is an anthropology major and graduating senior. And, yeah, right? And today, <laughs> today we want to talk to you about what we think is a key element of the college experience. One key element, a very important key element. And that's learning how to design and apply both rigorous and relevant research. We want to argue that by the time of graduation, every college student should be literate in research design, should have achieved demonstrable research literacy. We argue that gen ed can be reframed in such a way that enables opportunities for every undergraduate to be a research apprentice. And we argue, we're very argumentative, yes. there's a lot of argue, we should choose a yes, different we are. <laughs> Nevertheless, we argue that these apprenticeships are perhaps most productively crafted in tandem with faculty-led research immersive programs in local communities. All right, that's a lot. So, Here's a highlight slide, three parts of this talk here. Research literacy, undergraduates as research apprentices, collaborative, community-based, faculty-student research programs. Let's start with research literacy. Employers want, and the world needs, perhaps now more than ever, college graduates who are skilled problem solvers, right? Who are capable of critical, imaginative and reflexive thinking, and who have achieved research literacy. What do we mean by research literacy? We mean the ability to define, identify, contextualize a problem, to devise a methodology by which that problem is interrogated, to go out and collect sufficient data, to analyze those data, and then to articulate the methods, the data, the analyses for the purposes of interpreting patterns and extrapolating solutions. Right, so research is a process. And the current American four-year undergraduate experience is not one in which most students are guaranteed to have a good handle on this process. And yet, research skills, solid research skills, are in high demand in today's market. Law, public health, corporate finance, advertising, journalism, all forms of government, counterterrorism. These, among others, are the sectors that increasingly favor graduates with well-honed research skills and experience. Graduates capable of parsing and interpreting the outcomes of research for the purpose of advancing ideas and solutions. So intensive, experientially immersive training in the design and implementation of research, this is something that we traditionally relegate to graduate students, folks who go on oftentimes to pursue careers in academia, not like all of your faculty, for example. Graduate students, in effect, are research apprentices. What if we reimagined the four-year liberal arts experience? What if we reimagined it to include intensive research immersive training for undergraduate students so that by the time you graduate, you're fully literate in research design and implementation? Our current system of higher education structurally reproduces the idea that undergraduates, on average, are incapable of contributing to faculty research projects in the same way as graduate students. And this is a normative model seemingly shaped by deeply rooted assumptions regarding the limited potential contributions of undergraduates, assumptions reproduced by faculty as well as by students. <laughs> not me, though. right, not me. <laughs> <laughs> So you have, on one hand, the disciplinary breadth of general education in its current form. And then on the other, you have focused, intensive research training. These are not incompatible. I would argue that there really is no cognitive substitute for applied, field-based, project-centered research experiences. 
And in fact, we would argue that perhaps the most meaningful instruction and learning emerges when students are given opportunity to participate in the production of knowledge with faculty and in the context of active research programs. So what if we just revamped, reframed the last two years of the college experience to allow for this, to afford these opportunities to be fully research literate by the time of graduation? Point in case, point in fact, this oftentimes happens anyway. Advanced undergraduate students often seek out professors to work with them closely on faculty-based research programs. Undergraduates can be research apprentices. Just imagine the potential impact of hundreds of thousands of young adults with research literacy entering the marketplace and advancing public policy. But this approach will require a substantial reimagining of the college experience, one that will come from faculty as well as students. And on the part of students, we must be willing to move beyond the notion that the fourth and final year of college is a time to coast. <laughs> Rather, alas, this should be a time to switch into a higher gear, a time not only to de demonstrate, but to develop mastery of skills important to career and to community. Right, so on the part of faculty, we must be willing to explore new models for pursuing our research interests. We must be willing to apply our disciplinary expertise and training to local community-based collaborations. I think we must also be willing to deconstruct the socially performative roles of professor and student. I didn't know you were going to wear a tie today. I was going to try to perform this year. I texted so you. I texted you. I know. <laughs> Let's talk about collaboration. Collaboration is a key element of this model. And traditionally, college students are not really given opportunity to perfect the role of collaborative endeavors. There was a great article in The Voice recently, some of you read, sort of addressing this very thing. I think on average, we Americans are not so good on the collaboration front. We sort of have this go it alone, rugged individualism kind of approach that pervades learning and instruction. However, the workforce that graduates enter is decidedly collaborative in organization. Now, whether you're in Washington, D.C., or Silicon Valley, there will exist high expectations that all work and ideas proceed through joint contributions. In part, field-based research provides a good platform for mastery of the skills required for successful collaborations. However, it also presents an ideal framework in which to develop sustainable relationships with local communities. Sustainable, long-term relationships with local communities. How is this not already an expectation among institutions of higher learning? This is not a moral responsibility of academia in general. Can we, in good faith, be critical of global issues pertaining to social, economic, ecological injustices if we do not regularly address those issues in the local? A place where we arguably might have the greatest impact on the well-being of individuals and communities. Can colleges expect to produce global citizens capable of understanding behavioral complexity if they had not partaken in experientially immersive collaborations with local communities. Basic human capacities, social accountability, civic moral responsibility, empathy, and a willingness to collaborate are essential to any successful field-based project. An ideal place to develop these capacities is in the local, locally-based research, which mandates that researchers develop reciprocal relationships with the communities surrounding American colleges. 
So here at Connecticut College, we have some great examples of research programs that exemplify much of what Tim and I are talking about today. We wanted to share some of these examples because we think this is, a, this is a path for a future in the liberal arts tradition. As an example, in sociology, Professor Ron Flores, who's established a very vibrant relationship with Eastern Pequot tribal nation. This is a relationship, a partnership, that's very much based on notions of equity and respect. For the Eastern Pequots, this partnership is about identifying pressing needs within the community and then collaborating directly with students, faculty, and staff at Connecticut College to pursue solutions. In anthropology, Professor Jeffrey Cole has crafted a research project that looks at alternative agriculture in New London County. What's really neat about this project is that it positions students as invested researchers. They pursue farm visits, they conduct ethnographic interviews. In many ways, this sort of pedagogy, sort of research-centered pedagogy that Cole has developed creates a means by which students are held accountable, responsible for collaborative learning. When asked, one of Cole's students reported that working as a team was one of the most productive aspects of this overall experience. It promoted discussion, resourcefulness, and an audacious group mentality that above all else valued moving forward with more in hand than before. In sociology, Professor Anna Campos Holland has crafted a project with teen and youth population centers in Hartford, Connecticut. What's really amazing about this project is that her students work with her through every stage of the process. Research design, data collection, analysis, and dissemination, conferences, publications. Here in New London, I've crafted a really bizarre project that addresses smoking, identity, and the behaviors underlying why people toss their cigarettes on the urban landscape. I know, weird, right? So this vehicle, no, excuse me, this project has very much been a vehicle for training students in research design, in how to collect artifacts, in how to analyze those artifacts, in how to document them, how to conduct ethnographic interviews, as well as qualitative and quantitative approaches to inquiry. All right, so following my contributions, that was me up on the screen, in case you didn't catch that, Just picking jump. up cigarette butts. Um, <laughs> following my contributions to Professor Gresh's research project con concerning cigarette smoking and identity, I grew very interested in the interactions taking place within bars in New London and elected to pursue a locally-based research project of my own, an ethnographic study of eight New London bars, as my senior honors thesis. And the thesis concerns the potential of a bar to be considered a community, anthropologically speaking. Now, this research compelled me to wander out of what we so lovingly refer to as the con bubble over to downtown New London, um, a place with which I was not intimately familiar. Despite my work with Professor Gresh, I wasn't really acquainted with any downtown residents and had virtually no knowledge of the social scene. Now, one of the most widely applicable skills I would go on to find developed in field-based research is adaptability. And this is something which quite simply can't be learned in the classroom setting. Take the example of my own research. I had to modify my behavior and my presentation of self in accordance with the different personalities of small business owners with whom I interacted. I had to learn to be reflexive, to understand the manner in which my own background was informing everything from note-taking to interviewing to even processes of building rapport with informants. Now, I admit that prior to the beginning of my research, I had certain concerns about New London. Many of these regarded my safety and were based in generalizations prevalent across campus, that New London is sketchy, that New London is dangerous, or conversely, that New London is lifeless. These days, I walk, yes, I walk, over to downtown New London three to four times a week. And when I do so, it's largely to spend time with friends and acquaintances rather than simply run through an interview and head back to campus immediately afterward. And I've come to recognize New London for what it is, a city with an intriguing and quirky history, 
very active art and music scenes, and a vibrant, invested, extremely invested community. Now, among the most rewarding elements of my research, personally speaking, was the ability that it offered me to communicate as an adult. On campus, I would hold there exists something of a divide between faculty and students. This is not to say that faculty members do not pursue relationships with students, or vice versa, but nonetheless, there exists kind of a notion that we're more or less kids, kids being led and guided by adults. And when I'm downtown, I'm never a kid. The people with whom I interact are in their 20s, are in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. Age is not dichotomized as I would hold it is here. My status as an adult when I'm downtown is never questioned. People value my input just as I value theirs. And for this reason, I feel like my research, which again, compelled me to wander out of the con bubble into a local community, has made me accountable not only for my own behavior and for my own future, but at least in part for the future of others as well. And to that end, I've decided to remain in New London for another year following the conclusion of my research for the purpose of further developing community-based research projects and outreach initiatives. Applied, locally-based, student-faculty research. This is an endeavor that requires all participants to wander outside of their comfort zones. This is also a reciprocal process capable of yielding intellectual and social benefits across the board. We argue that this is also a path to experiential and collaborative learning, and it affords you, the student, opportunity to acquire full research literacy prior to graduation. This is a model for higher education in which we seek to produce global citizens capable of reflexive thinking, and empathy in the pursuit of local and global challenges, solutions to those challenges. And last, but certainly not least, this is a means of establishing sustainable relationships between colleges and the communities in which they are located. Thank you. Thank you.